start praying for us. Um, sorry, missing last meeting today. Hopefully, we can continue. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of your work and your timing and uh, Lord, how you never fall short of anything that you intend to do. But Lord, how you nonetheless, uh, in a sense, don't take it all upon yourself, but want to share your work with a company of sons and uh well this is a thing almost impossible to, to comprehend for the religious mind mm -hmm. uh, which sees you in so many fractured ways um but lord we bless you and thank you and praise you for the revealing that uh, has taken place in our own hearts and those who you have truly set apart from this world to be holy unto yourself and your purposes and how that has come with a measure of true understanding of who you are and what you intend to do and what you desire us to grow into and to be so may this Lord may this gift of a true uh, and clearer comprehension of sonship and the work of sonship uh, be something that continues to shape our minds and hearts Lord, more than any uh, merely adopted idea of this world uh, could ever do in anyone's life. So, Lord, we, we don't consider sonship as a, a theory or a, uh, a product of man's mind, but as something that is... Uh, to be recognized as a heavenly pattern, something that is from the really only uh, only to be understood from the standpoint of your heart mm. and the way that you, or well, the way that you have designed relationships to be, mm. which again is something often clouded mm. and obscured by. Um, by man's understanding mm. and so Father I pray for this continued work in our own people here mm. as uh, we learn more and more what this looks like in uh, the relationships that we have now mm. and uh, but as we learn to understand sonship as, uh, as has been said in other occasions as not merely a personal journey mm. um, but a an endeavor carried out by a people that are brought into unity by your spirit mm. and are sharing in that transformative work of mm. your spirit of holiness mm. but as we come to walk in in righteousness mm. and know that our our steps in this life mm. and in the heavenlies mm. are foreordained by you mm. and uh mm. lord to continue to see our progression in the work of the spirit of sonship as being akin to becoming mm. uh, <laughs> I've always appreciated this example but mm. uh, like becoming better archers mm. or knowing that it takes time to improve one's aim mm. one's accuracy and one's precision mm. and 
and uh Lord to know that when one's heart is set mm. and uh when uh the master is always there by your side mm. to to train you in uh, improving in the skill mm. then you are only bound to be successful mm. and Lord, we just, we bless this work and, uh, Lord, we pray for just not more, not merely more revealing as to what it looks like, but what we want to, to practice it and see it, uh, before us and in us mm. as we entrust your spirit again, all the fruit and the timing and the growth. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Noah. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I do want to leave it, take fast forward to the <clears throat> discussion on this book. Um, again, Kongzi the Xiu Qi Zhi Ping. Excuse me. Sorry. It's Confucius. Uh, Bishop is a way of life, you know, we love teaching his disciple to be a genes of Bishop. So now, in the uh, portion talking about how such a ideal person should uh, live in the world, in uh, on the tail of that section, um, we last time we were talking about, um, you know, if uh, the, the nation living in it's in terrible time you have one way to uh, carry yourself you know so if you you know the nation is basically lawless or wicked in general like Sodom and Gomorrah in bible story that's a good picture basically uh, you carry yourself in a certain way but uh, when you know you can use a word called the politics or the policy of the nation is good. You can live right and uh, speak right, you know, so, you know, um, then if it's darkened or perverted, then you want to live your life very right, but very careful with your speech, basically. Don't, you know, inflict yourself with unnecessary troubles, basically. So now anyway, uh, then we talking about this idea that uh, the extreme laid on by Monfucius presented as if uh, uh, a young lad supposed to be a princess, a prince, I'm sorry, suddenly become a king, then uh, this is such a righteous or wise person should be able to be more than a tutor. Um, but when it bought to be a in trustee in the sense you know a trustee um, a garden for that young king and how to manage the kingdom and then raise the young man up to be a wise king you know so we see that happen in history many times and in China history prior to Confucius there are some outstanding wonderful examples you know so uh, I don't want to. Uh, one of the thing, one of the person, Confucius, the mark called the Zhou Gong. Zhou Gong, who was uh, a duke, not a king, but was the uncle of uh, a young land who became king. Is you know the brother for the former king, basically, uh, and uh, he was so diligent, so kind, and uh, raised a wonderful young king up, and then receded, you know, so and pass on the management or authority of the kingdom to the young one, which is a seldom happened, you know, and later uh, China is not ideal. The history is so full of uh, tragic and uh, even evil maneuvers. But there is ideal still there, you know, from ancient days. That's which become the idea of Confucius, the model after and continue praise and he want his students to uh, learn from those wonderful examples. Um, 
fast forward on this session, there's a little bit of detail to it. So we're going to move on to the next session, more talking about the like that hates that's Chinese translation directly, the whole Wu, okay, of such dreams. Uh, you know, so. Anyway, the tale started with a um, wonderful Confucius disciple have uh, uh, this comments in the context we're talking about, basically how to suit yourself and how to live your life in the world. You know, so here's um, four uh, standard. I don't know how to translate it, basically as one who is um, uh, enlightened, or rather in in this way, taught, educated, a learned man, basically. I, I like the word learned. So you should uh, sacrifice our life when your nation is in danger. Um, you should, um, um, when you are rewarded or achieve something, you should think about is it you deserve it at all? How you, you know, why should you get it? So when you worship, you should uh, or pay tribute to the dead. In Chinese, it has a tradition, right? So you should be sincere. When you are mourning for somebody, you should really feel sad. I mean, those are very basic requirements for such um, uh, a learned person, you know, that it's not really a genes, the standards, the basics, you know, so basically basic morals of a good person, how to um, deal with yourself in a world full of events that can impact your life greatly. But in terms of, there was a place called a, a maturity, I mean, Chinese called a maturity, actually is a modern maturity, basically a man come of age, you know, so um, in China, I'm, you know, we see it. Confucius actually re uses his own life. You, you must know the story. You know, you're quite familiar with Confucius' life right now. Shu or zi xu, you know, san shi er li, okay, so means 15 years old, he you want to be a learned man, you know, so he started learning things. But when he's a 30, then he feel he's established. In this case, you know, you can see this word called the Cheng Ren means it's not really particular to age, oftentimes, obviously parallel with a person's age and life experience, but more about the wisdom, whether one is mature enough. This is a very similar concept, especially in New Testament context, talking about whether man is is a spiritually mature or not, you know, basically, are you wise in the light of God or not? Are you have an understanding heart able to follow God's will or not? So now anyway, so in terms of this standard, um, you know, Confucius has some ideas. So, you know, so um, then he said, what a really a man when he's a mature or not mature but basically established you know so means when he sees gain he thought about how to properly use it what the righteous um deed should be accomplished after he is enabled through resources, whatever. So, Jian Wei Shou Ming means when he is a burden with a care responsibility in a time of danger or crisis, you know, so he's, he's willing to volunteer for it. I don't quite know how to translate that. Basically, learn to not um, abandon the words or commitment, I guess, or maybe basically some kind of an oath uh, that pertain to a waiting for life, commitment life. You know, you were talking about archery, basically you want to have a moving target all the time in life, you know, so once 
you got the target fixed with 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 learning enlightenment discernment in in our context as a spiritual people we should have god give us that you know without uh, with our understanding heart agreement there's mutual agreement with the vision of life and calling life then when that's settled you know so um, you you it's like a cornerstone and right from the horse you want to build upon that and this is a the pattern life with Jesus Christ is our cornerstone, you know, so, uh, you know, so that's how you build a house, start to build it. So you you can move your cornerstone all the time, thinking somehow you're going to have a place to live. So, so those are basic principles, whether in archery, whether in building a house, to speaking about certain thing has to make the word sure and certain with the help of God as uh, some of fundamentals, initiations of uh, life values. That's, I think, what Confucius is talking about. So basically, once this person is not lured by interest, is not intimidated by responsibility dangers, he's committed to some of fundamental values of life, uh, you know, then that is a matured man. That is a man can say is begin to be established, you know, to be established. Uh, establishment yet to come, but he's he's got the fundamental down basically. So now that being said, we can see the disciple, Zhang is a disciple mentioned. It's basically another way to put the same thing as Confucius talking about a person uh, you know. You can call it established a person. So all of this um, later commented by Zhu Xi, as you know, it's a scholar later days commented on the teachings. <clears throat> it's talking about the Da Jie, means uh, the major principles of a person's uh, morals, or you can call it um, um, standard, you know, so of life. So. Um, basically, anyone missing, that person is imperfect, you know, is missing something, much like the four pillars of a horse, and right? you miss one pillar, the horse cannot have a st- steady roof, you know, so the next topic is transferred to relationship with others, a relation obviously have different kinds, and different tenuous relationship. So they sometimes combine together in their comments. There is another side called Zi Yu of Confucius. Um, it said, Shi Jun Su Shi Ru, yeah. Jun Peng Yu Su Shi Su, yeah. He's talking about it, basically a proper measurement. He said, if you serve the king with uh, self assumed, the word of frequency of basically uh, uh, unnatural, unnecessary, <laughs> you know, uh, um, what's the word? It's, uh, you know, it's like it, it basically overdoing it, you know, so even in respect and kind of care. Oftentimes, it was this, this, this worldwide mindset, you know, you might be insulted. So, based on that, speaking about basically the whole thing is about learning self respect and properly respect others. You know, how to deal with a relationship like uh, your supervisor or your king in the Asian context, obviously. Then, your friends, you know, so you don't want to to I uh, again the word we use is a familiarity you know produce expect light to be so familiar that there is no proper boundaries proper respect between them obviously their boundary respect it is not for um mentioning those things it's worry already invoke negative thinking in the mind for common man. Um, 
you know, in the mind of an immature man, immature、uh, with a culture, whether unhealthy with a culture, rather, begin to see friendship, you know, share and things, you know, as if, you know, it's it's often without the proper understanding how honor and respect should be applied. So we talk about the spirit of familiarity in our. Missed, you know. So you want definitely to treat anyone in your life, especially parents, siblings, those in near you in your family, with absolutely loud respect. And、uh, you know, but you don't want to go the lower way, a、uh, familiar way, in the sense is、uh, negatively familiar.、Uh, you know, treat things with contempt. Or take things for granted, you know, or treat them with abasement.、Um, Not in a sense with dishonor and improper attitude actions. So, it's a, such a, a a a meaningful observation and minimal policy for life.、Um, you know, to f- be on the test, I want to refer to the. To the book called the Me and right, so the book of Me. Me means propriety, you know. So, in the right middle, not middle to make a stand. Don't ever choose a side per se. That's that's. It's actually there's nowhere to move, you know. So everything there's a center.、Uh, honor there's a standard, you know. Love there's a proper way. That's the Me mainly talking about. You know, things have its own principle. It's it's a propriety. It's a settled way.、Uh, so more than learn from that, but apply that in life and in relationship. So, in a sense, there is a propriety, if you will. Now that came to the idea we talking about her indicated is called in Chinese this very interesting concept to make me think about a lot. When I was、uh, learning things, you know, so called the 过犹不及过 excess overdoing something. 犹 means the same as or just like you know, so similar with something. 不及 means not done enough, you know, not not not、uh, reaching there. So imagine you have a, a destination. Let's say we. Travel from Dallas to Austin. I mean, you know, you you only get the San Diego,、uh, San, San Antonio, whatever. I don't quite understand the actual location. Basically, I'm now reaching Austin. You know, let's see, a hundred miles away still, away from Austin. Oh, you overdo it. That is, you passed <laughs> highway th-、uh, thirty, thirty-five.、Uh, sorry, then overdo it. Go over. You know. Uh, a hundred miles. Either way, you're a hundred miles away from Austin. So that's the city、uh, where she afford parallel for that. Now on that point, do you have some comments? Especially with this notion called the 过犹不及啊 That's a very interesting question, huh? Very <laughs> interesting notion. So go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to hear more of what you think about it. It does remind me of.、Mm-hmm. Um, The idea of moderation that we talked about before, yeah, that golden mean in life,、mm. and、uh, yeah, I, I don't think I, I think I was having a conversation with the young brothers、um, maybe last week, but we were talking about、mm. how being obsessed with something is、mm. is pretty much in every case、mm. uh, not a good thing,、yeah. even with. Good things. To、yeah. be obsessed with it is to、mm. to turn what was once good、mm. into something、mm-hmm. potentially evil or damaging because of the way that you、mm. you devote yourself to it、mm. or、yeah. apply yourself to it. I mean to say, yeah.、Um, mm. It really is. It reminds me of. I think it's a it's a a stoic phrase, but I think it's also in proverbs put in a different way. Mm. But basically,、mm. the mind, or all things are as the mind 
uh, makes them so, mm. or however it's put. Which, mm. if there's if there's something off within the man's mind or within the man's heart, then mm. it can, and mm. it will actually slowly, mm. whatever he applies himself to, mm. even if, or perhaps especially if it's a a good thing. Mm. Mm. Because he, he perverts what was once pure because mm. of what was impure in himself. Yeah. And that is usually seen in a like an inordinate indulgence in a thing or an obsession with a thing. Yeah. That makes the thing unclean. Yeah. That can be I think one of the worst cases of uh, of this is mm in the way that religion often manifests itself, which is mm. um, an emphasis on things that should not be emphasized. Like, just think of the way that mm. we were just talking about this last night. <laughs> just think of the way that the uh, mm. the sin conscience works. Yeah. It is, it is focusing on uh, something that is of some importance, but it is actually focusing on that thing. Yeah. And such a way as to distract from the main thing yeah which is to become like a son or to walk in righteousness <laughs> instead of that being the focus yeah the uh, the sin consciousness or the sin conscience I mean, yeah is always focusing on whether or not one is solid or unclean and yeah so yeah there's always this emphasis on sin mm. inevitably the, the focus is always on sin rather than on righteousness <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> It's, it's two different de counterintuitive yeah sense. two different yeah. ways dealing with things I don't want to sh shortcut your conversation I'm just talking grief with you anyway you, you move on do I have further thoughts on all these lines mm -hmm. no actually I'd like to hear more but uh, just I just think thinking about, think about it a couple of days ago I was you know my life had a lot of experiences you know so there are many things make me thinking while like talking. I mean, less in reflecting on my life. You know, when I was young, I see a lot of people. I mean, when the school system, working system, you know, so met just a lot of people, you know, observe a lot of people's life, in a sense. Had a chance to do it, in a sense. Uh, um, um, just seeing a lot of people's life being ruined by your, your work called obsession, you know. I, I'm, I'm not, we are off the text, but I think it's good for life learning on this topic, you know, so hopefully other occasion can come back to it. If not, we'll just use this occasion to do a little bit of observation. I remember when I was in college, this is a personal stuff, okay, so not personal, personal life stuff. So mm -hmm. in college, I given the opportunity to do a little business, you know, especially my professor, um, you know, uh, they have this uh, a access to screen foreign films, most from Hollywood. In those days, China don't allow it. <laughs> so seldom so able to to have a, uh, before the release to the public, somebody has to, to, to label it, you know, so. It's, it sounds very bad, but uh, that gave me opportunity. Basically, he, he said, you know, those films some pretty good. You know, you you know, you have this little theater or cinema. Why well, don't you use it? Uh, the wife was a hand on all those things, so you know, to see if you you can earn some money to it. So uh, so for a year or so, I think less than a year. I'm not sure how long. So. I start a little business with you know, so, because they they allow me to to do that, you know. So I don't want anything from me, you know. I remember trying to share profit with them; they don't want it. But the basically the theater you can sell our tickets, you know, let the students watch the the film before you know releases the public. And that was very very lucrative thing, and everyone will be part of it. So um, there's uh, other colleges. And people heard it on the partner with me. So anyway, one day I, uh, you know, um, dry out to this uh, this this college. I was pouring down with the rain. 
is a life story. Okay, and sorry, I just we are for the text. And because I, uh, somehow I had to deliver the tickets, so the people got dispensed in their college, in their camps, had to collect the money. So back and forth, you know, in a couple of days, you know, you're on schedule, basically, you know, it's back and forth, traveling around. And those days, for a couple of days, the rain is pouring, you know, so. The first time I noticed a guy, you know, just uh, standing in the rain, no umbrella, soaking rain, you know, under this building for student dormitory. And I thought, you know, my, this guy, what's going on? Uh, well, I try and laugh to see him doing that. And eventually, then go to, you know, the friends who tell it, I said, wow, what is going on this guy, you know, so. Oh, they, they, they laughed. In the beginning, I tried to think he needed a ride, you know, I, <laughs> but I was so busy, I can't, I thought I'm going to come back to pick him up, you know, whatever. And they said, oh, no, no, don't, don't bother him, you know, so I said, why, you know, why in the, in the world he's, he's standing in the ring, you know, so he need to get out of the ring, you know, so I said, oh, no, no, he's doing that for his girlfriend. So, you know, the same building have boy section, girl section, different different levels, basically. I said, what? So, how long have you been here? He says, hello, he's been here a couple of days now. I said, it's crazy? So, the first time I, I, I noticed not to bother him. Now, the next couple of trips, he is staying in the same spot, doing the same thing. You know, the people in Office of City is making fun of him, but I walk him, this is, feels terrible for him. I said, where's the girl, you know, thinking about it. I don't, you know, it's, it's an awkward topic. Then I thought, you know, why drive him back, you know, so I think, would I do that to a girl I really care about? Mm, no. I, I don't think I will do that ever. <laughs> By the way, what's wrong with this guy? You know, the, the girl obviously don't like him. So, and uh, so that's the first time in my life I see a young man obsessed. I mean, he has no idea. He's just, he don't even have a relation. I heard the story. Don't even have a relation with a girl <laughs> to begin with. But he tried to do all those things in his own mind to impress this young lady. As a young lady, cost a lot, oh, you can imagine the whole university. They're going to laugh at that thing, you know? I mean, make it such a terrible thing for the young, 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 young lady's life by his doing all this inconvenience for himself. And, and I walk away, you know, those days don't have God, but I said, Wow, you know, mind, uh, don't think straight, literally ruined everybody's life. Uh, I just somehow in my mind, I remember, I think this man, this young man will never have a, a happy future. He just signed up with a mindset, going to cause himself most in a lot of trouble, called everybody's life a lot of trouble. I'm not saying that it's a romantic love devotion, but that's such a childish way. You know, once a young age, I understood those things are not helpful. Now, fast forward now. Because that's the first time I've seen somebody with a strange idea ruined his whole life. In terms of doing that, he ruined others' life. I mean, that young lady going to be have a hard time to find a boyfriend <laughs> because it ruined her, her reputation. You know, so I thought, wow, you know, if, if, if the young lady going to have a boyfriend, not have a boyfriend, always have the shadow cast over her. She's not responding to someone or obsessed with her as if she's done something wrong. I mean, nothing to do with her, you know, so some of this imposed on her. I thought, this is terrible, you know, I'm just thinking. 
uh, it really bothered me for a long time. I said, wow, you know, those days I don't read the Bible, no Confucius, but I recognize there's something is off here, terribly off. And uh, I'm fast forward, when I was homeless, I had the chance to look at many lives of prom, the beautiful people, you know. Most of them, you know, I don't know the English connotations is allow me to use my own connotation. Basically, I think it's don't, they don't think straight. Something happened to their mind, to the way of life. Something just turned them on, off or, or stuck, you know, their mind stuck. It's, it's, it's like always obsessed with something or something that's like uh, uh, they refuse to think in a broader, wise, and um, and understanding way. You know, I, I met so many, uh, pour their life out. You know, they, their suffering, their pain, even some tragic thing happened in life. It definitely worth to sympathize. You know, oftentimes, also less in life is is like a novel for me. You know, so a uh, lesson, lesson. I mean, case after case, somehow uh, it ended up in the brokenness, in the traumatized life, but uh, somehow it damaged the personality. I mean, the real personality being damaged. You know, so fast forward now to uh, to <laughs> to Christians. You know, that's the experience I had. I'm going to. Ex- a little bit exhausted, the, the thing came to my mind. There's a couple of days ago, I'm not sure, in the morning when I was meditating the other things, I think that, you know, I remember this, this, this brother, which you, who, who you know as well, you know, I used to, to ask him to buy me some, um, not tequila, what's the word, uh, whiskey, you know, so something like, you know, Jim Bean, basically. <laughs> so, so, but I said, I want to try that, you know, I grew up in China, I like, you know, go with the food, a little bit of drink sometime. I, that's a long time. Never drink any liquor, you know, so beer, yes, time to time. So I said, I'm going to try something. You know? I want to try this gin bean thing, you know, because, you know, <laughs> I never tried it before. So not not really. So, and uh, so I like asking him to buy one for me. All that's a trouble. The first is resisting and saying, well, what's the deal? I'm paying it, you know, so I can buy it. You have the car, why not pick it up for me? Well, on the way, he bought it, you know, unhappily. Then I get home, I said, hey, here, here's the money, you know, so where's my bottle? I mean, I know this religious people who said, this guy get a drink, profits. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's why I try to highlight, you know, all the deal with those things, deep reflected the way how you deal with in God's side. What what it mean to deal with your sinful nature, your sinful ways of life, you know, so so most time is obscenity and people don't want to even mention beard, you know, you know, oh I'm so gracious to put out with the people actually enjoy alcohol or beer, you know, so you know, anyway, so as if you're gonna get drunk because you have some beer, or you get drunk because you have some liquor. You know, so but <laughs> that's where moderation comes from. Opposition, ability is a contrary to moderation. That's my saying. The problem is totally obstination from hard liquor, whatever, it's not a liquor problem. Rather than lack the confidence and self-discipline to partake up in in a proper way, and enjoy it, but at the same time never getting drunk, you know, don't overdo it. There is a, a different way exercise self-control. In it, a different kind of freedom. The first set with obstinate kind of freedom is actually bondage. 
That's what I'm trying to highlight. I move forward ahead. Okay, so, but if you're moderate, you don't get drunk. You know, you don't just overdo it, but you enjoy it. That's a much a tougher case for self control than never drink it. So which way to go? You know, that's the、um, interpretation. What control is? I mean, self control. You know, so I, I don't know how to explain it. You know, very well, except to give you. I mean, drinking and like any other things. Am I so we might indulge in and make us obsessed, lost control of. But how you deal with that? You know, there are different ways to deal with that. How you define your freedom from those things? Again, there are two different ways. Ways with a spirit of fear. You know, the other is a spirit of confidence, able to master it. And the other is. It's a slave, and I cannot deal with it. Then, you know, just want to get out of it. <laughs> so, so, so,、um, I think it's pretty reflective of、uh, the the situation. In that case, because for a long time I thought, man, what's what's wrong with me? You know, put it somewhere in this awkward situation. In this case, you know, when I get home, try to embrace his money, he said, "I don't need it." Why? Somehow sneak it out, I threw the bottle in the trash can, and driving home <laughs> all the way, and never mentioned to me. I, I, you know, it's like、uh, he's so obsessed. He don't know how to even have a healthy conversation with me. Either come from me and say you should not, you know, buy those things. That's okay, I understand. Then I don't need him to buy it for me. <laughs> But he bought it. Then he decided without any knowledge, any proper conversation, said he gonna throw it in the trash can and leave me in the home. I thought he got it for me. You know, I'm gonna drink some. So, you know, so we in dinner time. So, so, so his good intention. And、some even constructive intention, you know, for me to not getting drunk, whatever, <laughs> be stupid. <laughs> it turned out to such a disastrous thing, you know. You can't even shoot him out. He would pour the scriptures, you know. You understand, really, the mind of work. How how they go to every hole <laughs> to say they they need to do that. My point is that what's going on with his mind is messing up. You know, so it's not merely a liquor thing or buy liquor. It's not even my thing. It's a way religion has destroyed many a healthy, otherwise very capable, very wise young heart, young mind. I mean, they can do the other thing excellently, but somehow in this. It's、almost like something very damaging to the mind happened. They refuse to think about it anymore. Can I move on with another story? And then dealing with alcohol, we're talking about the same the sense they talk to most Christians. But hey, <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of the things of life. So in later on, there also a Confucius school of.、Um, Scholars, you know, there's this two brothers. One is,、uh, I mean, they're extreme. These two brothers, all big scholars, you know, they impact the later days. This whole school thoughts, but they have a different way how to discipline themselves. So called Er Cheng means a Tu Cheng. Cheng is the last name, you know, somebody. I forgot the exact name, but basically the big brother. He's a very strict person, you know. He's he's like he's acting always try to be proper, you know. But the this the young brother is very easy going, you know. He's like laughing, whatever. He's this is like very such wonderful personality. But they're all so intense, so sincere, and so 
uh, wonderfully contribute to this school of thoughts, if especially being as, uh, you know, a learner of uh, Confucius' way of life. On this one occasion, say, something um, basically changed the big brother perception. You know, often the big brother, look at the young brother, says if, you know, he's, you know, it's, you know, you're not serious about things, you know, so <laughs> the young brother will look at the old brother and say, you're too serious, you are so strict, you know, so, you know, barely able to get to know you, you know, so get close to you because you make people uncomfortable all the time. So now the story goes here. Is this older brother one day take on a personal trip and the right to uh, uh, you know, in China, you have the, have the Yangtze, right? this big river, you know, especially in the floody season, that river become a very, very challenging. And uh, those days don't have big boats. You required a very serious boatsman to chart a certain course, not more than the river flooded. They also, there's a portion of it is from a high altitude suddenly dropped to the low. You can imagine it's a long, you know, it's not a short ride. So you can imagine that where particular terrain, uh, it required a very well seasoned boatsman to help you chart the course. I mean, he determined, you know, he's afraid, he never know how to swim. So he said, you know, I had to travel anyway and boats the fastest way. So he said, I'm going to overcome death, you know, I'm going to overcome my fear. That's actually what he determined to do by riding the boats. So get out the boats. And he, he said, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to practice to keep my heart unfreed. Practice uh, courage now. So when the train is courage, you know, so. So he chose to not step, stay inside the boats. You know, they have a hidden quarter, obviously. He chose to step on the front of the boats, you know, so so he can face the way, face the outside, basically, you know. So can you imagine that very challenging? So then he sit down, you know, like a meditating, you know, so like a Buddhist would do it, right? <laughs> so, so he he began to quiet his mind, and he, but he closed his eyes, you know, so <laughs> meditating there, and then the 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 boatsman was an older gentleman and uh, i said what are you doing you know so you can get in the boats he said no no i want to overcome fear you know so anyway the most la laugh at it the older boatsman is then go on the business and uh, you know keep him quiet after the the reaches the destination he he was uh he rise up, you know, from his his meditating state. I said, "Oh, yeah, I have overcome fear, you know. <laughs> I'm not free to die, you know. I keep myself, you know, in a good shape, you know. So, uh, and uh, so he began to. I don't quite recall every detail. The story, the essence, is this is the old boatman commented." Oh, for you, basically, oh, you mean that is your overcoming fear? You know, just teasing him, obviously, he don't intend to assault him. But that statement become a life, a, a meaningful moment for the gentleman. He was all sweating, fearful, you know, so, but he didn't retreat. Uh, so he thought they were calm in the fear of death, whatever it is, or danger. And the old man, you know, so basically, you know, he has been doing this all his life. <laughs> and uh, he walked away, you know, thought he's not afraid to die, you know, not afraid of danger. And then look at the old man, so, you know, wow, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, the, the lesson or the moral of the story in that is our inner perception. Or the way we adopt 
how to overcome certain things. And obviously, you know, the key word here is moderation and obsession, right? So the gentleman said, I gonna you know, murder my own fear, my inner mind to overcome this terrible thing. And turn out he was obsessed with the idea to overcome. He's not, he's not really unfree to die, am I? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the idea to overcome fear, death, become obsession for him. And the one who truly not afraid to die, like the old boatsman, he don't even think about it. You know, so comments. Basically, that's right by my comments. So back to you now, so. Yeah, there's something about obsession to me that really causes a man to lose his humanity. There's something mm. very animalistic about obsession. Mm. It's it's as all it's almost as if the mind takes over mm -hmm. completely. Like there's there's no involvement any longer of the man's mm -hmm. the man's heart or any other faculty of his being mm. apart from his senses mm -hmm. <laughs> so i guess another mm -hmm. a stronger uh kind of obsession has mm. to do with addiction which is very mm. um physically influenced it has a lot to do with mm. the human brain even but yeah obviously there's evidence of a a flaw in the heart when one is obsessed with mm. Um, things that are a little more tragic, I guess, which mm. have to do with things that are are good or should be good or uh, mm. engaged with or undertaken mm. in G moderation. Give me a particular example so I can understand your context at least. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I guess. I guess um, a relational example mm. would uh, be a more suitable and perhaps applic more applicable uh, case because of mm. how common it is. It is uh, mm. I, there's actually a word mm. um, used to describe a an obsession over a person especially one that develops at a, a young age. The word is limerence. Oh, can you send that to um, me? I have no idea, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a very common word. I. Mm. You go ahead, don't stop. But I think it's... Exposition, yeah. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind of soul tie. A soul tie is another kind of unhealthy oh, obsession. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I mean wanting to have a relationship with a person oh. and love another person and receive love from another person is in itself, of course, mm. not a bad thing. But when you create an entirely mm. separate world in your mind mm. that is centered around that person, mm. then it becomes an extremely damaging mm. obsession or soul tie. Mm. Uh, everything in your life is... Well, it's it's tied to mm. what you hope to receive from that person. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the earlier example you gave, mm. that young man who always stood out in the rain. Oh, yeah. The girl that didn't really even yeah. have a relationship with him to begin with. Yeah. That is a really, it's a really sad thing to see as I think yeah. you yourself yeah. realize because yeah. and I think most of us, not all of us, but most of us have uh, experience those feelings at least in a smaller measure or in part mm. um in uh mm -hmm. maybe as younger people sure uh an affection we develop for a person whether it be as like a mm -hmm. a love interest which mm -hmm. uh, i guess is sometimes called a crush <laughs> oh yeah that's good or, <laughs> good word i like it in that's other cases uh, i think mm -hmm. in, in rare instances mm -hmm. you have um, 
you have a, an obsession with a person that's not even necessarily romantic, but mm. there is still this uh, inner dependency upon that person that may not even have, mm. I think often doesn't have a solid relationship with you. So it can be very, very mm. it can be very, very uh, taxing on the heart and it can mm. be very, uh, mm. it can just be a, a, a real torturous struggle yeah. to mm -hmm. just to carry that, that burden. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't really speak from that much experience, but, um, observations. Good. Anyways, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think, let's mm. see. I even think of, uh, I think one thing I can um, relate to um, through experience is my mm. interest in, in in knowledge and in learning, mm. uh, even in something as simple as reading. Mm. That, that's also another um, basically good thing mm -hmm. that can become a harmful obsession. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to exhaust the subject because there are so many things that could be so many things. Uh, yeah. God can yeah. become an obsession. Oh, but anyways, I think it's good because the point is it, yeah, application. Am I so the observer and the apply in life? That's why we learn. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And this idea of walking in the mean mm. or learning to appreciate life and um, simultaneously distance yourself in life through moderation mm -hmm. is is what it looks like in practice to walk in the mean <laughs> or to find a, a kind of balance in life. Yeah. I think uh, mm. there's, it's interesting to, to consider mm -hmm. the inward detachment we are to have um, from the things of this world, which even include mm -hmm. our relationships, because everything is, mm -hmm. um, if, if it is of this world, it is temporal. Mm -hmm. And realizing that is uh, coming part of the way to mm -hmm. uh, truly detaching yourself from, from it. Yeah. And of course, that detachment does not mean you become uh, old or mm -hmm unloving mm. or um, inwardly uh, uh, distant uh, distance is, is not necessarily what you're going yeah. for but there is still sure there's still a a detachment because you mm -hmm. your heart and hopefully your mind catches up at some point mm -hmm. um, is set on on something different it, it's set on something that that doesn't change yes it's set on, on something that is not affected mm. by time yeah in fact that's one thing i think later in life we come to appreciate about life is that it really is always teaching you how um how little you are ever able to depend on anything that is of this world mm. because in doing so you are always disappointed mm. And those those kind of expectations mm. always lead to unhappiness. Yeah. And rather than going down that, that dark, chaotic swirl mm. of misfortune, mm. you can instead look upwards and see that <laughs> mm. you're being taught something all along, and that mm. there's there's something greater to put your hope in. Mm. And that's when you truly begin to be detached from the things of this world mm. i always like what the song um uh uh what's the song like set your eyes upon jesus oh yes the things yes of earth will grow strangely dim mm. in the light of his glory and grace yes and That's that is obviously the the cry of our spirits <laughs> and yeah learning to to, to really uh, manifest that in mm. 
in life is is hmm. a struggle and it takes time but yep. so do all good things that's right and uh yeah yeah hmm. i i think there's um I had something else on my mind, but I'm starting to lose grasp of it. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. I, I, I just think it's really beautiful. I and enjoy what you share. Yeah, I enjoy. I fully agree. I enjoy your your reflection here. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, and, you know, why are you talking about this? So I think about the Bible, talking about the content, you know, Paul later they in the New Testament, being content. So Jesus, you know, Sermon on the Mount is about the contentment, you know, so mm. a man full of ambition, obsessed not necessarily with a person. It can be with things, ideas. You know, I'm thinking about a tragedy like in Hitler's time, Mother's own time, people doing personal worship almost, the whole nation. So something go beyond uh, merely a person, the whole cause, uh, the whole nation, you know, generation, they become obsessed with something. And then when person, hate a lot more than don't others, the similar nature, you know, was able to play this mind game, am I? So in the name of others, actually, they were people, literally unhealthy characters, um, <laughs> let's see, unhealthy personalities. They are obsessed with something, with the power, achievements, whatever, you know, so the ideal for their nation, their people. And it's, they are just a personification of something the whole people was obsessed about, whether revenge or, you know, being uh, number one nation, number one race, you know, all those, all hatred, you know, towards, in foreigners or Taiwan Jews, you know, those kind of ideas. Am I being idolized and not idolized, being idealistic, <laughs> in idealized rather into theories, you know, polished talking. Oh, you know, become a national policy, whatever, you know, so motivations. The Bogdan is a little child game. You know, you're upset. Don't have that marble. <laughs> you lost. You upset. Lose that game. You know, so three times you don't like it. I'm gonna be that neighbor neighborhood boy <laughs> this time. You know, so those uh, those people mind is not thinking straight. I, I don't like the word, but that's the best way I can put it in English. You know, they never really know themselves those people refuse to know themselves either as a generation you know so it takes 20 years for any nation as one generation to fully change the course you know i think president reagan speaking about the danger of forgetting the benefit democracy some ideas you know so if you know so it's always hung in the balance in a sense but that being said, in the Bible, uh, you know, they did not use our vocabulary or our history uh, um, instances to highlight certain things, but they definitely know the will of man, you know, where the individual thing um, from there, a uh, 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 people or a generation, you know, so. Um, that's why Paul talked about the contentment in learn being content. This is speaking about do not worry, you know, or fear about things. But in the Old Testament, the same idea in the law, in the Ten Commandments, talking about do not convert, you know, that's basically don't go beyond the necessary boundaries, you know. So it's not that you can't do that, it's rather. You should not do that, you know. So try to learn uh, being content with the law of life. And uh, but who define the law? You know what being your lot. 
then uh, that is a big question, troubled, and sometimes tragically disturbed or encaged human thought through generation after generation, you know, so who really, what is really a lot, you know, so um, the only ones that seems, you know, have a grasp uh, on those basic tenures of human life and human fate, quote, quote, fate, is the teachers or the you know the, the the way of thinking about life itself or thinking man as a moral agency an intelligent vehicle if you will is teaching the bible which is inspired by god obviously and then you know confucius is those kind of uh, you know I call it side of the show, but it's not a side of the show in a bad way, you know, so like, like a sidebar is a main page, and right? so this they call sidebar. But, you know, they understand some of the basics, you know, so therefore they decided change society is not going to be a mass product project, it's individual start, you know, so, but it's take corporate efforts, which is a cultural building, building culture. Um, with that being said, I really appreciate your insight um, on the things. You no, know, this is not small stuff, you know, look at the history, look at philosophy's man design. How many hand ever think my lot is given by God? You know, my portion belongs to the Lord. I mean, the Lord given me my portion. Uh, that's obviously is not in Americanism. Americanism is the, the you know, so-called American dream, right? That in bride, it's it's American dream. <laughs> it's not God dream for you. So I'm talking <laughs> a China China dream. So I'm not you know not try hard like Americans has become. It's a foreigner this kind of thinking, and it's, uh, then the constitution. No, think... Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. go ahead. The constitution about the you know pursuit of personal happiness, whatever. What a mean? What make a man happy? Never defined. So yeah, exactly. so go ahead. Mm -hmm. On that same point, actually, I I think of really the best idea that man has been able to to come up with on his own, particularly in this society and at this time. It's the, the phrase of the the layman, I guess. <laughs> mm. Whether he's a whether he's religious or not or a believer or not, which is this idea of love being the answer. Uh. As long as you're kind and affectionate towards others and you want the best for other people, uh. then really the world would be a better place. And so as long as people learn to love uh. then everything a all, all the all the problems of the world will be solved but then just as you were saying with this yeah. idea of the pursuit of happiness yeah and asking what is happiness then if love is the answer then please <laughs> tell me what love is <laughs> yes and uh, if if it is in fact uh the you know the the answer to everything then yeah the panacea i guess is the word i don't know if i yeah it's the, the cure all or the heal all. Then, then yeah. what exactly does that mean? And I, yeah. I have this this personal imagery of mm. relationships in life. Mm. I don't really remember what inspired it, but mm. I, I just I think of the of our creek here near the property, mm. Whiskey Creek, <laughs> I or I guess any old creek. Mm -hmm. Just this little babbling brook, mm. and. I really do see relationships in life and the affection to be found in them hmm. and the joy and the, the sorrow and everything that accompanies them to be like that brook, hmm. which is beautiful in and of itself and maybe uh, a thing delightful to, to cool my hand hmm. in and to dip my, <laughs> <laughs> dip my arm into and maybe hmm. splash my face with a little bit. Hmm. But it's never something that I could submerge the entirety of my being into because I'm simply mm. 
not, I mean, the difference in dimension and in size mm. between myself and that brook is never something that I would be able to be mm. encompassed by fully mm. uh, submerged into. That's right. And I, I really think, I know it's kind of a silly No, imagery, that's beautiful, actually. I like that imagery. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm. there's, there's, there is something, uh, th there is a kind of eternal beauty to this, uh, this babbling brook, but even, or per, I mean, perhaps it's not eternal because sometimes the, the brook, <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes it dries up mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it's, it's polluted and it, sometimes it's, mm. uh, sometimes you can't even find it because it's, it's so hidden in, mm. Mm. <laughs> in, in the woods. But I, mm. I see that things that are of an eternal nature, mm. things that are even deeper than the most meaningful mm. and, uh, the longest lasting, mm relationship yeah yeah are are things that you can be submerged by like something like the ocean it's mm. just the way that the ocean compares to the the babbling brook mm. that's and so beautiful yeah rather than being something i'm only able to fit mm. the length of my arm and hand into it's something mm. that i can be utterly swept into and mm. really one with yes as opposed to just the, the small stream that's right and there's, there is something, <laughs> I guess what makes that imagery poetic to me is that there's, there's something, um, nostalgic about even the beauty of the, the small stream. Yes. And mm. the ability we're given in this life to appreciate it. Yes. And reminiscing on all the heart throbs and heartaches that we've had over others that are meaningful to us and that we hope to have relationship with and mm. uh, that we have made so many good memories with or mm. uh, whatever you want to reminisce on. Mm. But at the end of the day, you cannot fit more than the length of your arm into it. Mm. It really can't. It, I mean, just I mm. think of that young man that you mentioned. Mm. I, I think of this, using this imagery, I think of a, a boy trying to to swim in a small stream he can't do it and it looks ridiculous for him to be trying mm. to do so yeah because he's trying to submerge his being into the stream <laughs> yeah he looks like a he looks like a worm writhing on the ground yeah because he's trying to swim in something that's not deep yes yes i think the young man obviously the way he was taught in life about many things are off you know, are off. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, can you blame that? You know, so maybe not his fault. You know, so yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has no idea. He's a product. Maybe the parents. Maybe you know, other people around him. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. That kind of obsessivity tendencies is usually to do with the people around you, how, how you were brought up in this, so, yeah. Yeah, that's why you have beautiful parents or beautiful elders, whatever. People, you know, will settle balance in life, wise in life. It don't, it, 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 it helps to filter those away, you know, to see what it actually they are. So, you know, cast the right light upon it. Let me examine those things, you know. So it's interesting. Most people incapable of doing that, you know, we're in the middle of it. And why people flood to worship Mao Zedong, you know, in China, you know, in the time. Mao Zedong won't be worshipped, he said, you know, da da da, you know. So, but all those are nonsense. In the end of the day, you look back, that's what happened. So damage mm -hmm. done. You know, that generation was swept under that. That emotion, oh, don't even say emotional, something going on. That's why your mind, especially a mass, can never be the standard of a things because it's so affectionate, you know, I'm a non you know, so, 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 so easily be influenced you know, by their own passions, their own 
perceptions. So I'm obsessed. <laughs> I use the word. I love that word actually. So obsessed with idea, you know. So actually don't know much, you know. So even the thing they think they're passionate about, they still don't know much. The reason is not because they don't really know much. The the reason is that they don't know how to handle it, you know. So they don't know what to do with it. So go with your passion. Go with your 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 this common stir. Um, it's often the wrong way to to go about it, you know. So yeah, and and unfortunately, certain things you done to society or some life is. It has consequences, you know. So, yeah. I don't wanted to cast a negative note on all things. I think the beauty is that once we spare from those things, a young life and a generation can start build things that are healthy, you know, perpetual and meaningful in life. That's why I'm looking forward for your rising up. And you're flourishing in life. With that, why don't you pray for us, Grandpa? Here, so.、Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord, I do myself lift up the young people, and Lord, having myself been a young person and and being a young young person now, I I know the many struggles and trappings and.、Uh, Distractions that will often flood a young life, and Lord, lead them away from eternal truth and interest in eternal things.、Um, but Lord, it has been so encouraging、mm. and amazing, even to see how you are leading our young ones、mm. into. A a true and even profound interest and understanding of、mm. uh, that which is of the spirit.、Mm. And Lord, what a a beautiful and meaningful foundation to、mm. be built upon,、mm. and to grow upon, and to be rooted in,、mm. Lord. I do pray that the roots of every young person, of the roots of their heart and spirit, would continue to delve deep into this foundation,、mm. even if that means that what is seen above the surface、mm. uh, seems to be <laughs> falling behind and and、uh, in growth and in fruit bearing.、Mm. But as long as those roots are digging deep、mm. and Being more <laughs> solidly mm. founded mm. in you,、mm. we can wait all the time that is needed for that fruit to be born.、Mm. Um, Lord, truly, may everything of this world,、uh, mm. as you enlighten our eyes and our hearts,、mm. everything of this world be seen for what it truly is,、mm. even in the young minds. And、uh, may we have that inclination, inspired by your Spirit,、mm. to、uh, be overtaken by you,、mm. Lord. Not in the sense that we are uh, lost, <laughs>、um, but in the sense that we, even as the another song says. <laughs>、mm. We're completely in over our head, and、mm. uh, hmm. Lord, there's a a kind of again the word detachment from everything that is of this earth, and、mm. we are swept away into your purposes,、mm. Lord. Sometimes not even knowing whither we are going,、mm. but、uh, learning to love the walk of faith. And learning to love,、uh, stepping into the unknown, <laughs> really as we we should, Father, as those who are making a way,、mm. 
pioneering into something that has not been uh, stepped into by man before. Mm. Lord, we don't consider this a presumptuous thing to say. Lord, it's mm. your very spirit that is leading us into it, mm. that has called us into it. Mm. So, Lord, we bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Noah. So encouraged by you and your progress in life. And with others as well. So, um, okay. a blessing now. Bless okay. You. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bless uh, Lord. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.